Have you ever wondered how the ancient Egyptians managed to drill into granite with such ease, almost as if they were drilling into wood? Or how they carved intricate details into hard stone using tools we can't even find today? These questions have haunted me for years, sparking a fascination that I just can't shake. It all started innocently enough. After college, I found myself drawn to documentaries about ancient civilizations. One night, I watched a program about the pyramids, and something just clicked. I began reading everything I could find about ancient Egypt, diving into books, online forums, and endless videos. What struck me the most were the unanswered questions, the mysteries that modern technology still can't fully explain. I'm Jason, and what began as a casual interest quickly turned into an obsession. I was enthralled by the architectural marvels of ancient Egypt and the enigmas that surrounded their construction. How did they build the pyramids with such precision? What tools did they use to drill into granite with the ease that a carpenter drills into wood? And why can't we find any of these tools today? Despite the stories I've heard about Egypt being dusty and filled with tourist traps and scammers, I still dream of visiting one day. I want to stand before the Great Pyramid, explore the temples of Karnak, and walk through the Valley of the Kings. Seeing the drill cores, the lathe-turned stone vases, and the unfinished obelisk in Aswan with my own eyes would be incredible. There's something about these ancient engineering feats that feels almost personal to me. Every piece of information I uncover only deepens my curiosity. The copper tube drills, the unexplained grooves on drill cores, the massive stone vases, each discovery feels like a piece of a puzzle that I can't quite complete. I often find myself questioning the accepted explanations and yearning for answers that make sense. I know I'm not alone in my skepticism, but it can be frustrating when mainstream archaeology dismisses the fringe theories that captivate me. This journey into the mysteries of ancient Egypt has become a rabbit hole that I don't think I'll ever fully emerge from. But I don't mind. The pursuit of knowledge, the thrill of discovery, and the hope that someday I might unlock even a small part of the truth keep me going. Maybe, just maybe, I'll make that trip to Egypt one day. Standing in the presence of those ancient wonders and feeling a connection to the past that books and documentaries can't fully capture is a dream I hold on to tightly. This was definitely done with tools more advanced than our present-day modern ones, because we still can't cut into granite with the ease the ancient Egyptians seemed to have, akin to a carpenter drilling into wood. This doesn't explain that, and investigators are getting mocked for speaking out about it. Drill cores like these have been found all around ancient Egypt, which were the leftover pieces thrown away by Egyptian builders after drilling into granite. Modern explanations use a bow drill made from a copper tube to demonstrate how these holes were drilled. And they work. With busted, we can move on, right? Not even close. First of all, yes, there are several hieroglyphs that supposedly demonstrate the use of these alleged drills, typically using them on tables, not granite slabs. Yet not a single copper tube drill artifact has ever been recovered from Egypt. Like, ever. They made these holes all the time. Shouldn't these copper tube drills kind of be everywhere? Counter-argument. Copper was so valuable that they likely smelted it down for other uses. Every single last one of them. How convenient. But that's nothing compared to the machining marks found on this drill core, the infamous Petrie's core number seven found by Sir Flinders Petrie. And of course, the common Google debunker can search this up and find countless sources that irrefutably debunk this myth. But for those who can think for themselves, a little digging shows that something just doesn't make sense about this. Analyzing the core and wrapping a string of cotton around the grooves show the drill marks produced a continuous spiral down the entire core, which the bow drill method doesn't do, but rather horizontal lines that look nothing like the authentic Egyptian cores. It doesn't end there. Analysis confirmed by fringe theorists like aerospace engineer Christopher Dunn, who worked with machining tools his entire life, suggested that after studying the spacing of the drill marks on this core, the penetration rate of whatever method the ancient Egyptians used to drill this core must have been 500 times greater than our diamond drills today. His words, his conclusion, he obviously must be crazy. Oh, and let's not forget the clearly drilled holes for door hinges in temples like the Osirion. 
Those must have been quite the delicate task with a copper tube, right? And then there are the 40,000 plus stone vases and pots made from rocks such as granite, not clay. These were clearly lathe turned and had to be made with something rotary, similar to the drills that left all those mysterious drill cores behind. Now, that doesn't mean the drilling method was faster back then than it is today. It just means that according to his calculations, these ancient drills had a greater vertical penetration for every rotation of the drill than today's technology. This fringe analysis explains how the grooves on the drill core indicate a 0.1 inch of vertical penetration for every rotation of the drill head. Whereas modern diamond drills with a 900 RPM achieve about 0.0002 inches of penetration per rotation, 500 times less than the ancient method. It could have very well been, and probably was, slower with whatever drilling technique they were using back then. But this level of penetration is mathematically not possible with today's diamond drills, and clearly not with the bow drill. Consider the large modern core drills used on concrete building and road tunneling projects. These are manufactured with diamond tips and require immense pressure and forces to be effective. The cores produced by these modern drills bear a striking resemblance to the ancient ones, unlike the ones made by handheld tools. And then there are the strangely parallel concave grooves left by some tool at the unfinished mega obelisk in Aswan. These grooves, resembling scoop marks in ice cream, were actually produced by something akin to a smoothing, rotating tunneling machine roller drum that spun at high RPM, penetrating into the rock and leaving those distinctive striations behind. Now listen, I'm not saying they used lasers or advanced high-tech drills or anything like that. I'm also not fully dismissing it, but it seems so obvious to me and several other questioners that something was used here that they're just refusing to even acknowledge. Maybe the ancients had some sort of forgotten method to soften hard stone, making it malleable and easy to work with, that we're just unaware of. It seems as if these things were mass-produced from some sort of template, and not just individually made as one-off works by some sort of master craftsman. And they definitely weren't made by slaves, because each of these is a feat of engineering on its own. The statues of in Abydos and Luxor, weighing up to 1,000 tons and carved from granite, present an enigma that defies the conventional understanding of ancient Egyptian craftsmanship. These colossal statues, akin to the Colossi of Memnon, suggest a level of technological prowess far beyond what is attributed to the ancient Egyptians. The precision and scale of these works imply they were created using advanced machinery or techniques that have been lost to history. This notion is further supported by the discovery of over a dozen massive serapium boxes in Saqqara, each weighing between 80 to 100 tons with lids over 20 tons. The box left in the middle of the passageway, immovable by modern teams due to the narrow passages, underscores the idea that these artifacts were created with advanced knowledge and methods that remain hidden from the mainstream narrative. These finds suggest a forgotten chapter of history where advanced civilizations may have flourished, their secrets buried beneath the sands of time. Okay, that's enough for now, because this is a rabbit hole that I don't think anyone's ready for.